Hello and welcome to another new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. This is all about movie heroes. So if you listened to last week's movie villains, here's the other side of it. Enjoy. Hey everyone, it's Tony the Movie Guy. Before we get the party started, I just wanted to let you all know today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Tony the Movie Guy. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. I've used Audible. It's a great service. I recently listened to the audiobook Unqualified by Anna Faris, which is fantastic. I'm a huge fan of her podcast as well. So I highly recommend it. Go ahead and use that link and enjoy the episode. Hello, everyone. It's Tony the Movie Guy and... Miss Money Yenny. Wow, you're in a chipper mood tonight. I'm trying something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So we've got an action-packed episode for everyone tonight. Um, our main topic is going to be movie heroes. So this is a counterpart to uh, movie villains, which we did a couple weeks back. We actually did that episode back in November. Because we talk about Christmas, they would know that by <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> Funny story. So that episode basically got lost in the shuffle because there was so much going on. I had people coming, uh, you know, from out of town that guested on the show. Um, anyway, so that episode just went up and uh, we decided to do movie heroes to kind of as the counterpart. So we'll probably get this episode up in, you know, the next week or so. So you'll be listening to that one soon. Um, but that will be our main topic. We'll go through all the different uh, movie heroes and uh, discuss and debate that, which will be fun. Um, but as uh, normal, what I want to do now is kind of a uh, Tony's movie beat. I know I need a jingle. Yeah, you, but anyway, you gotta work on that. <laughs> but anyway, um, just so we can kind of go through a few things. Uh, obviously, it's January 23rd. Uh, the Oscar nominations uh, dropped this morning. So I want to kind of go through those, talk about them. But before that, uh, I'm going to let you uh, tell everyone about a movie you just are raving about. So yes. the floor is yours, my dear. Okay, The Greatest Showman. So first of all, I don't know if any of you saw the Oscars a couple of years back when Hugh Jackman hosted... And uh, that was when he came on my radar as, uh, you know, a musical actor. He has done Broadway. So he and um, when I saw him in that, I was like, wow, this this guy is so talented. He's not just Wolverine. He's not just some amazing action star. This guy can sing and dance like, a, you know, a gazelle. He's he's really good. That's right. He does a whole song and dance number on when he hosted the Oscars. Correct. I remember so that, that was quite that, memorable. That caught my attention. And then so when this, when I saw the first preview of this film, I was like, this is going to be awesome. Now, how awesome I was extremely underprepared for. Um, this film is uh, musically and choreography wise dancing everything spectacular it is as if you are going to a, a beautiful musical theater show and you come out completely just blown away uh the the equivalent to me was when i went to my first show of river dance in oh, wow. london michael and, flatley yeah it That's was a the throwback <laughs> it was the original too yeah. like it had just come to london and i walked out i cried many times from the pure aesthetics of this beautiful show so i take it you loved the greatest showman oh my god Gosh, I loved it so okay. much. No, it's now one of my five favorite films in the world. Oh, wow. Like, that's how much I loved it. Okay, so you really loved it. I um, There are, you know, from the chemistry between him and Zac Efron, um, everybody is cast so well. The, Zac Efron's in it, Zendaya. He, yes. Uh, Michelle Williams is his wife who does, she can sing like a, a nightingale. She's oh, really? She's amazing. Got a nice voice. Um, she does a beautiful job uh, playing B.T. Burnham's wife. The, the two girls that play his daughters can sing and dance like, you know, theater children. They're amazing. Um, the, the boy that plays him as young B.T. Burnham is incredible. Um, 
yeah, everybody in it is perfectly cast. I'll and, say that. And uh, Rebecca Ferguson, who's from Mission Impossible, yes. Rogue Nation, the last one. Exactly. So she's in it as well, right? Yes. Great cast. It is an amazing cast. They are all spectacular. The All the original songs uh, for this film are incredible for every scene. Which was quite bold because it's a completely original yep. musical. And almost, um, you know, I obviously have my favorites, but every single song matched with what is going on in the story and what is being explained, the costumes and everything is so good. There was cheering and crying and the entire theater clapped numerous times, not just at the end. Um, and I will say you cannot walk out of that film without feeling so uplifted and so happy. I've, I've listened to the soundtrack about 16 times since Saturday when I watched it. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go see it again. Um, yeah, 100% uh, a film that I think didn't even get enough attention for what it's worth. The only thing I'll say, and I think if when you see it, you will notice this, that the only negative thing I have about the film, there are a few little CGI aspects I didn't like. Oh, right. Some animals for the circus and so on. But honestly, they didn't really bother me compared to everything else that was going on. It was unimportant. But if I'm going to be a critic about it, I would say that was the only thing. That took you out of it a little that, bit. Yeah, that took me out a little bit. Um, but they put so much into the choreography, the musical aspects that it didn't matter to me. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, look, I mean, The Greatest Showman, it was an interesting film because obviously Hugh Jackman's a huge name. It didn't, as you said, it didn't get much buzz at all. It kind of came out right at the end of the year. Yeah. I didn't have much interest in it myself personally. Um, critics weren't very kind with it, but it's actually, as it's rolled out, it's done quite well. I think word of mouth um, is really helping it because everyone who's watched it is loves rave it. about it and yeah. loves it. And it also sounds like a real kind of positive feel good film oh 100 percent. which is so nice much. to see in the world of cinema these days <laughs> which is um, why i think the critics because critics are critics it's yeah. all, honestly hey, a, i'm a critic a, you're a nice critic <laughs> i'm a new breed of critic. he's a new breed of critic but you know how like even like i was like a bit upset that it wasn't even more mentioned at the golden globes or the oscars it's too uplifting for that kind of thing it's just uh, an overall such a beautiful film and so happy. I think it's almost too happy for something right. like that. So um, you shared one of the, the songs, uh, This Is Me, mm -hmm. which I really liked, a very powerful song. So powerful. And then I saw that um, video that's been, uh, you know, streaming online yeah. of Hugh Jackman doing that whole number, the rehearsal, the rehearsal which is phenomenal. Yeah. So that really did bring my interest up. And, yeah. you know, I know there's been controversy because, so the film is kind of like this... Uh, very loose biopic of P.T. Burnham, who's this famous circus guy who apparently was very controversial because he abused animals and blah, 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 and all sure. this stuff. And again, I guess if you strip that away and you just look at it as a kind of a song and dance spectacle, it sounds like in that arena, uh, it succeeded very much. Yeah, and it's nowhere in the film does it say this is a biography of B.T. Burnham. It's loosely based off what he did. Right. He did invigorate the idea of circus. Right. And he did take, you know, a lot of the basic facts of that film are very exact in terms of where he, you know, he started in a very bad financial situation and then made things happen out of nowhere. You know, some very, uh, all the basic ideas but then they brought someone in, you know, like Hugh Jackman to carry these spectacular performances. And of course, he shines. Right. I mean, he's awesome. And, uh, you know, my interest is peaked now. So I'll definitely check it out. I really so hope you watch Out it. of five stars, what would you give Four it? and a half. Oh, wow. So you love yep. this movie. Yep. And you couldn't recommend it more. Huh? Yeah. And my half off is literally just the small technical points of some of the sets and a, a few of the CGI animals from the circus that bothered me at the end. That was about it. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Well, The Greatest Showman, you guys heard it here. Uh, check it out. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have other movies on my mind that I want to talk about right now. You know, in the movie beat, I would cover, like, new films I've seen in the theater. And the truth is I just don't go out to the theater enough to see new movies because they don't interest me so much. Right. I watch old movies over and over again. So I'm going to work on that. Um, we did finally see It. Oh, we did see it. We were we That's said we true. were going to review it. Okay, well, this is a few months late, so yes. uh, we'll talk about that just for a minute because a uh, I don't want to go way over time on on the episode tonight. But um, it was phenomenal. We loved it. Uh, it was phenomenal. Yeah. So um, 
number one, anyone who said it's not scary, one of our close friends, Serena, was like, oh, it's not very scary. You are full of shit, yeah. Serena. And I love you dearly. So full of shit. It was very scary. We were terrified. Yeah, It's got many jump scares. And also, I fucking hate clowns. I and know. that Bill Skarsgård, he did a great job as Pennywise. But um, I think you agree with me. What shined the most in that film was the kids. The kids yes. were so perfectly cast. It had a very um, Stranger Things feel feel you know which really coming even, of age yeah even that is just a throwback to all those 80s films stand yeah. by me et um you know and even finn wolfhart again the coolest name in the world yes. who's mike from stranger things is one of the kids yes. um but you know even the the cute little chubby kid was fantastic the uh the, the redhead girl was mm-hmm. great Bev. the bully was really good so good spooky you know as you joked uh, you know that guy from uh stranger things too he was almost kind of like that the mm-hmm. the bully guy from that um it was was phenomenal i understand why it was such a runaway hit uh, it's a spooky film but it was just really well done and now i'm very excited for the next you know part two which will come out which will be you know when they're all grown up and yeah. they have to face pennywise again so yeah it we if you haven't it seen it sure. we highly recommend yeah. it i gave it four out of five stars yeah. i did review it it's on the tony the movie guy facebook page okay good so um what I want to go over, because this morning, all of the uh, Oscar nominations came out. And I personally think this is a pretty exciting year for movies. Um, because a lot of the Oscar films are films I don't gravitate towards so much. Um, and I haven't seen all of them, but I think there's a strong lineup this year of of uh, some really exciting films, great actors and actresses and so on. So I'm just going to kind of roll through the list. Um, we won't talk about it too much but i'll give some of my thoughts but um you know so uh what i'll do is i'll just go through the the main nominations and categories so best picture three billboards outside ebbing missouri the post the shape of water dunkirk ladybird get out call me by your name phantom fred and darkest hour so that's exciting those are all up for best picture best actress francis mcdormand i love her Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Saoirse Ronan, Lady Bird. Sally Hawkins, The Shape of Water. Margot Robbie, I, Tonya, which is great to see her get acknowledged. Meryl Streep, The Post, her 21st nomination. It's ridiculous. And I love Meryl Streep. It's yeah, ridiculous. Of All right, best actor in a leading role, Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour. Can't I think wait. he's I think he's a shoo in. Yeah, I you agree. Know, I mean, Oldman is phenomenal. Uh, Timothy Chalamet. Call Me By Your Name, Daniel Day-Lewis, Phantom Thread, Daniel Kalua, Get Out, which was a huge surprise. And actually, I mean, we just saw Get Out again recently. That film has so many layers. It's mm. fantastic. And that leading actor, he's phenomenal. He's so amazing. I was really happy to see that. And then Denzel Washington for Roman J. Israel Esquire. That was a big surprise because that film came and went. No idea. I know it's bizarre. Um, But who doesn't love Denzel? Of course. Uh, Best director, Christopher Nolan, Dunkirk. Very happy about that. Believe it or not, that's Christopher Nolan's first nomination. What? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh, Guillermo del Toro, The Shape of Water. Jordan Peele, Get Out. So that's fantastic. Good for him. Yeah, Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird. Paul Thomas Anderson for Phantom Thread. Um, Let's see. Actress in a supporting role, Alison Janney, I, Tonya. That's great. I love her. Laurie Metcalf, Lady Bird, Octavia Spencer, The Shape of Water, Mary J. Blige, Mudbound, Leslie Manville, Phantom Thread. And let's see what else. Actor in a supporting role. Sam Rockwell, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I love Sam Rockwell. I love him too. He's one of those character actors who, he's great in everything he does. So You I, got I, me I, into him. Yeah, I really like seeing him get nominated for a film I haven't seen yet, <laughs> but I really want to. <laughs> we'll see it. Uh, Willem Dafoe, The Florida Project, love him too. Richard Jenkins, The Shape of Water. Christopher Plummer, All the Money in the World. That's crazy because Kevin Spacey got cut out of that movie. Christopher Plummer filmed his scenes in a matter of weeks and then the film got released. And he's, I think he's only in it for a short bit, but he got nominated. So that's pretty phenomenal. And then Woody Harrelson for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And then Best Animated Feature Film, Coco, Loving Vincent, The Breadwinner, Ferdinand and Boss Baby. <laughs> a lot of controversy over Boss Baby getting nominated. I'm going to tell you right now, Danny and I really enjoyed it. I bl- I, I did not like that film. <laughs> I started watching it and was like, ugh. We really enjoyed it. It's seriously weird, mm. but we liked it. Best Adapted Screenplay, Call Me By Your Name, 
Mudbound, Molly's Game, The Disaster Artist, Logan. That's kind of cool that mm. Logan got an adapted screenplay. I know you're not. And The know. Disaster Artist. Well, I kind of knew that with that that film was very acclaimed. Uh, best original screenplay: Get Out, Jordan Peele, Lady Bird, Greta Gerwig, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, Marlon McDonough, The Shape of Water, Guillaume del Toro, and The Big Sick, which is Emily V. Gordon mm-hmm. and Kumali Nunjiani. And let's see. Um, I'm not going to go through all the others because there's yeah, lots and fine. lots of different categories. Uh, best Original Song, um, Remember Me from Coco, Mighty River, Mudbound, This Is Me, The Greatest Showman, Mystery of Love, Call Me By Your Name, and Stand Up For Something, Marshall. That's another film that just kind of came and went. Uh, cinema. T- Photography I am interested in because Roger Deakins got nominated for Blade Runner 2049. It's like his 14th nomination. I want him to win. Um, But yeah, you can see um, a lot of exciting films, very diverse. Uh, What was interesting is there were some snubs. Uh, James Franco. It is frustrating, but I think because of that controversy, they they just kind of took him off the lineup. That's 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 a shame. That's what it seems. I thought he was phenomenal. His performance was was worthy of an Oscar nomination. Yes. And then Jessica, Jessica Chastain for Molly's Game, she was very acclaimed in that. And then there was no nominations whatsoever for Wonder Woman, which a lot of people were surprised about. Wonder Woman is a great film. I don't know that it was worthy of Oscar nominations. I understand that. Okay. So to me, that wasn't a big surprise. Now, Get Out was a very warm surprise for a lot of people because they got like eight nominations. That's great. You know, and that's like a quote-unquote horror genre type mm-hmm. film, which usually doesn't get nominated. And Jordan Peele, who's, you know, a an comedian. African-American, or an African-American yeah. first-time director. Uh, but again, I watched that film again recently. Uh, get Out is phenomenal. It has so many layers. So it's good. really fantastic. Um, what I'll do is I, I have a, a spooky sixth sense about the Oscars, as you know. He does. I have predicted the Oscars 100% two years in a row. Um, and I think the year before that, I got like one or two wrong. Yeah. So um, I, I probably need to get off my ass and see these films because there's quite a few of them I haven't seen. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to post my predictions on the Tony the Movie Guy Facebook page. And uh, after the Oscars, we'll see how I do. We shall see. Okay, anyway, so that's the Oscars. Uh, it's an exciting time. And you're right. I thought the Oscars were in February. You said no, March. Yeah. You're right. It's March 4th. Uh, they yeah. pushed it even later because it was it was like February 20th or something last year. Are you sure? You know what? Probably not. I guess I'm wrong. The reason I say that is because we always have like the Super Bowl and in February it's the Super Bowl and Valentine's Day and March has always been Oscars to me. Really? Yeah. Okay, well. I'm wrong. Um, (laughs) Let's move on. Um, Okay, good. So our main topic for tonight is movie heroes. So this will be fun. So, I mean, who doesn't love a good movie hero? You know, movie villains are nice and delicious. Movie heroes are people you can cheer for and really get behind. And film has really uh, produced some incredible heroic characters. Oh, yes. And... I was looking at, okay, so, because my list was getting incredibly long, so I started getting into, like, a deep dive on what really is a movie hero. You know, you have the main protagonist. Is it just the protagonist in a film? But I tried to sort of narrow it down a little more to the the, the hero type of protagonist, if that makes any sense to you. Well, to me, it is simply, I mean, I do think of it being a, a leading character in most cases, but it's someone heroic. Correct. Someone you cheer for, someone you root behind, you yeah. know, someone you would love to be, you know. There um, we go. Yeah. So anyway, the thing is, is I like a good debate, you know, and, and I, I like it when I give you a hard time about something I, I don't agree it. with. So, <laughs> you know, it's not a problem. Um, so, yeah, we'll go through the list. Um some of mine, uh, you know, because obviously there are films that have a number of heroes. Me too. They do. So I, I have that I'm just going to kind of group those ones together. That's, okay, good. I did the same thing on some of them. Do you want me to kick it off? You kick it off. Okay, good. So movie heroes, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, Star Wars. There's okay. no heroes in Star Wars. What are you talking about? Tons. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to choose, but I narrowed it down to the key one. So obviously my numero uno hero from Star Wars would be Han Solo. 100%. You know, um, also listed as the top movie hero on Google. Right. So Harrison Ford, I mean, he's such a scoundrel. You know, um, he actually has a character arc. He's a bit of a douchebag at first. But oh, yes. You, you love him. And obviously, he's a big hero at the end. And then he sacrifices himself in in the the new movies. But uh, obviously, Han Solo is, is fantastic. And, you know, Chewie is kind of his counterpart. But Han Solo is really the hero. He's the main hero, yes. Uh, Luke Skywalker, 
obviously Mark Hamill, um, and then obviously Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher. I mean, such a heroine. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, which was Sir Alec Guinness, and then Yoda, um, yes. as played by Frank Oz. That's kind of who I encapsulated as the primary heroes to me. And then I realized R2-D2. R2-D2 is... not wrong. R2, uh, C-3PO, not so much, because he's more like the bumbly comic relief. Yeah. R2-D2 is badass and saves the day in so many of the movies, especially in the prequels. He saves the day, like, all the time. So uh, I included him as well. Very nice of you, All Tony. right, your turn, dear. I will counter you with my Lord of the Rings okay, heroes. That's, that's next for me, so you stole it, it from me, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, and that's why I took it. So my top heroes, because there's a lot for me in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, there's tons. Are Frodo, Samwise, Gandalf, and Aragorn. That's what I'm going with. There are others, but those are my top. Okay, good. I agree with you. So I'll list mine since we're on them, because um, Lord of the Rings was next. But oh, shit. Sorry. Back up. I put Ray. I put Ray oh, for, for Star, Star Wars, Wars as well. Oh, for Star Wars, of course. Ray is... At, uh, see... Uh, Poe and Finn, not so much for me, but yeah. Ray is Ray, absolutely 100%. a hero uh, from Last Jedi and The Force Awakens. So I include her as well. And then Lord of the Rings, absolutely there's, you know, it was such a great cast of heroic characters in Lord of the Rings. Um, Aragorn, Viggo Mortensen is, was my number one he hero. He is my number one hero too. Also, I mean, Viggo Mortensen just shot to superstardom. Totally. Uh, Ian McKellen is Gandalf, of course. Um, Frodo and Samwise. Yep. Although if you think about it, Frodo gives in to the ring right at the end. And, I mean, Samwise is the one who gets him there and Gollum, weirdly enough, is the one who But Gollum, quote, we decided, unquote, was, the, the was a villain that of course. ended up being a hero in, in the well, villains one. Gollum isn't a hero at no. all. He he accidentally fell into the <laughs> yeah. volcano. But um, Samwise and Frodo, for sure. Legolas, Orlando Bloom. I yes. think he's definitely but heroic. I think he's a side hero, but he's not my top on them. A hero yeah. nonetheless. Gimli. Um, now, Eowyn. I don't think she gets en enough love. Eowyn is a badass heroine. And she saves Frodo. Well, it, no, in Return of the King, Eowyn, I, I don't know if you uh, know the, talk, the character I'm talking about. She's the, the blonde. I know who Eowyn. Well, oh, 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 sorry. So, yes, you're right. Yeah, so the Nazgul Duh. King yeah. has struck down King Theoden yeah. and then he comes out and he's about to kill him and he's That's like, right. no man can kill me. And she takes her That's helmet right. off and she goes, I am no man. That's and then right. she stabs and kills the king of the Nazgul. I mean, Eowyn is it's a true. badass heroine. Yeah. I love her. And then Merry and Pippin. Of I mean, course. come on. I mean, yes, again, they're comic relief, but they are badass. And in Two Towers, they're the ones who go off with the, the Ents and take down Saruman. That's right. Um, and then, obviously, this is kind of the Hobbit, but Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, I, I'm Freeman. going just Lord of the Rings, not, yeah. not. But he was a fantastic hero, I think, from from the uh, the Hobbit movies. Um, anyway, okay, good. So that was Lord of the Rings. Um, but I guess I'll go on the next one. You stole um, it from me. Well, you did it. I just kind of elaborated. Is that okay? No. <laughs> okay, good. Indiana Jones. No. That was my next one. You can swear. <laughs> Harrison Ford. Damn you. That's my favorite movie hero. Yeah, well, I mean, I think probably Han Solo would be just above him for me. But nah. I mean, India, uh, Harrison Ford's going to show up on Boy. here several times. But um, I mean, Indiana Jones is like the ultimate hero, the ultimate yeah. adventurer. If you think about it, it's a little odd because he's like a professor, but he's like this badass yeah. like investigator. But um, he's obviously the ultimate hero adventurer absolutely um you know with the iconic costume and hat and whip and everything like that so uh yeah he's a great pick fantastic okay, my dear. movie hero my next one is james bond which one all of them <laughs> <laughs> so james bond is on my list too what's which one's your favorite yeah i mean of course if james i had bond, to iconic. narrow it down um i would definitely say sean connery because i okay. used to watch all of the films this um, what do you do See, James Bond. A little martini shaken or stirred. No, Tony, right now you sound more like the guy from Star Wars. I don't know how to do Sean Connery. <laughs> Splendid. Oh um, yeah, I love I loved Sean Connery. I loved Roger Moore. I, I actually Roger um, Moore was the wacky, zany 70s and 80s one, which mm -hmm. I actually grew up watching, so I liked him. Me too. Um, but I I did I was not a fan of um Pierce Brosnan. He was okay. I liked him. Goldeneye was great, but then it just got really cheesy. It did. It just took such a turn. And I'm and, and I don't mind um our current Daniel James Craig. Bond. He's a little too macho for me as opposed to the charming of right. Sean Connery. 
But he's a good James Bond. Yeah, he's not then, bad. And then there was Timothy Dalton, who only did awful. two films. Oh, I actually liked no, um, The bad. Living Daylights a lot. And then there's George Lazenby, who's the only guy who did one movie. I agree with you. Sean Connery, to me, is the epitome yeah. of James Bond. Who's uh, such a great hero. Yeah. This, the, you know, the British secret agent with his gadgets and his charming of all the women. He's so good. Yeah, fantastic. And... Um, Again, I think I've told you this before, when Daniel Craig was cast initially, yeah. you know, I wasn't very happy with that because I remember I had seen him as a, a really nasty villain in a movie yeah. called Road to Perdition and he seemed gruff and rough and um, it wasn't until Skyfall that I really fell in love with that him. That was then a good I went, one. Yeah, then I went back and watched Casino Royale and now I love him as as James Bond, but uh, I agree, Sean Connery is definitely the it. ultimate James Bond. Okay, good. This is another Harrison Ford, um, Blade Runner, Rick Deckard. Yep. So he's a he's a hero, and you know, is he or isn't he a replicant? Who knows? But he's still a hero. All right, my dear. Robin Hood. Which one? Kevin Costner. Oh, do God. You, does it you matter? You and bloody Robin okay, Hood, Prince of Look, Thief. Yenny has like a love affair for this movie. <laughs> it's so outdated. It, no, you're outdated. Yeah, you know what? You know what you don't understand is I loved that film when it came out. I watched that. We're going to have times. this argument on like 17 podcasts. Anything I, I do, I do Oh my God, it here it he goes. You. Um, it doesn't Ryan Brian Adams sang the theme song. That's that's, that's how outdated it's like song. 1990. Tony, you watch a million outdated movies. To me, it holds up. To me, it's got so much charm, and I love that film. However, that wasn't my point. Robin Hood as a character, as a movie hero. Again, I've watched I'm giving all, you a hard time. Robin Hood was on my list, of course. <laughs> I've watched all the old ones. I love those too. Uh, Robin Hood, you know, including Robin Hood Men in Tights, right. which I found very amusing. And, and even the Robin Hood in the cartoon, in the animated version. Oh, I love the Disney Robin Hood. So yeah. good. So all of them, Robin Hood as a character and not just like as the actors in the film, but it's, to me, Robin Hood is the, you know, the going up against... Um, the suppressive the well, government, he would you know, rob the rich to feed the poor, and in yeah. a bad scene, you know, where yeah. where the you know sheriff of Nottingham really is taking everything and trying to usurp the throne from a good king. Yeah. So there we go, Robin yeah, Hood. I, anyway, I totally agree with you. Robin Hood is a classic movie hero, of course. Okay, I'm still on Harrison Ford. This is crazy. Jack Ryan. So he did Patriot Games, oh, he yeah. did Clear and Present Dan Danger. Um, actually, that character, Jack Ryan, has been played by several people. Mm -hmm. Alec Baldwin in The Hunt for Red October, Ben Affleck in Summer of All Fears, which is actually a pretty good film. Um, but Harrison Ford, um, I think, was the best Jack Ryan. And then Chris Pine actually played uh, I saw that Jack one. Ryan Shadow Recruit, which was not very it was good. was not very good. Yeah. But Jack Ryan is a good movie hero. All right, my dear. Sherlock Holmes. Okay, good. Which one? <laughs> Both. Come, okay, Benedict Cumberbatch, so, even though that's a TV movie, but it still counts. I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I love, love the movies. I Robert Downey Jr. I love Robert Downey Jr. with Jude Law as his partner. They yeah, so are, Watson, it's, again, yeah. it's a duo. Yeah. And they, they have such chemistry, those boys in yeah. those films. And I and I love Sherlock Holmes as those a concept. <laughs> yeah, those boys. They... They, they, he makes fun of Sherlock all the time, yet he supports him in everything he does. And he's his right hand, really. But Absolutely. he makes fun of him all the time. And Sherlock is such a quirky, weird, crazy character. Love the movies. Adore the TV show, too. Right. I mean, who doesn't love Benedict Cumberbatch as Sherlock? But and I'm talking Martin about the films. And then Martin Freeman as Watson, which, which, is which their chemistry is fantastic, too. Incredible. Yeah. No, I, you're totally right. Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Again, it's actually a duo. A lot of these are duos. Totally. Really, if you think or about it. Or even a group. But yeah. those two, they, they, they're they one upon the other. One couldn't survive without right. the other. And there have been tons of earlier renditions oh, of yeah. movies, TV shows, and stuff like that. But I think you're right, though. Benedict Cumberbatch and uh, Robert J. And Danny Jr. are probably the most the memorable. Best. Yeah. And I even watched the other TV show, um, Elementary. Oh, right. Which I actually really like also. It's, which is it's kind a, of a, a modern day modern spin depiction off of, in uh, New York. Robin Hood, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> it's good too, but those two are the ones. You still are. watch that? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Look at you, dedication. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Neo, there can be. That was my only next one. one. Keanu Reeves. No, no, there can be only one as Highlander, but <laughs> Neo is the one. You are the one, Neo. Yeah, so, uh, but then also it would be Morpheus, Lawrence yep. Fishburne, and Trinity, Carrie Ann Moss. To me, those are the three kind of ultimate heroes from the, uh, you know, the, well, the Matrix trilogy. Obviously, the first one is, is the best one. 100%. All right, back to you. My next one's going to be um, William Wallace, Braveheart. 
But apparently, and you said he was this nasty, as well, huh? apparently he was a real dickhead. Okay, now I'm going by based on the film. You're the film. one who told me that. I know, per history, apparently he was a bad dude. But I'm going by the film. We're talking about movie, movie heroes. heroes here. All right, so as how Mel they Gibson's are depicted. William Wallace from Braveheart. In Braveheart, yeah. Because yeah. in that film, he is the, you know, the fighter against they the oppressors. They may take our lives, but they may never take our freedom. Are you trying? I couldn't you, shout. You because can't do a Scottish accent at all. Oh, no, I it's can't. It's awful. I'll eat me I'll eat it, buddy. We last it on the pub. I'll eat it. I don't it's know great. what you're doing right well, let's now. Let's have some haggis. I'll eat it. I want a Guinness, a pint of Guinness. I'll eat it. It's great. Okay, silence. <laughs> it's late doing the lewd. Oh, good Lord. I'll eat People make it. Stop. <laughs> All right, continue. Okay, anyway, that was that was mine, yours. Okay, good. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, Rock, uh, Rocky, Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone from sure. all the Rocky series. Uh, clearly, <laughs> you don't care about that, but I mean, I haven't he, seen any of them. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, he is the ultimate sports hero, but I mean, everyone was cheering for Rocky. Rocky! You know, Adrian, you gonna cut me, Mick? Anyway, um, Rocky, okay. yours. <laughs> uh, John McClane Die Hard movies, all of them. John Mc. Oh yeah, Bruce he's a Willis. great of course. hero yeah, to yeah. me from Die Hard One all the way through to the yeah. end. He's he's somebody you cheer for. Absolutely. He's badass. He's funny. He's great. Yeah, the ultimate like action hero. Action as well. hero. Yeah, totally agree. Well, this one goes with that actually, which is Jason Bourne, Matt Damon. He was on my list. Too. So he's kind of again, he's kind of an anti-hero because he was like an assassin. He was yeah. brainwashed, but he's totally he's a great hero. And Matt mm-hmm. Damon played him really well. Um, yeah, which is weird because when. They did the big reboot, which everyone was excited about a couple of years ago. Ugh, it kind of fizzled. It. it wasn't good. I didn't the, like the one when they changed it to... Uh, Jeremy Renner. It well, was that was so better than the one, the one with Matt Damon that came out. But, uh, yeah. but the original trilogy was was solid. was very yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, good. Continue. The next one will be Ethan Hunt, Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So, Great I mean, hero. you know when they did Ghost Protocol and Jeremy Renner came in, the rumor is that Jeremy Renner, they were supposed to kill off Ethan Hunt oh, and no. Jeremy Renner was supposed to take over. <gasps> but that didn't happen. Good. And I mean, the truth is Mission Impossible wouldn't be the same without Tom Cruise. No. And, you know, look, he's pu- pushing on on the years, but he's in such great shape. He does all the stunts, which has become a spectacle oh, yeah. uh, unto itself in those movies that I think he's just going to keep going. And he's going to use the years he has while he's fit enough to do these and films. I, and I have to comment on those films. Not one... Have I ever walked out disappointed in terms of I walk in, I get entertained, great action, great, you know, some great comedic relief. I love all of them. Oh, they're iconic. Well, so Ethan Hawke, uh, Ethan Hawke, Ethan Hunt (laughs) is a great movie hero. Yes. Um, But you're right. Those films get better. I mean, the first one was fantastic. The second one, when it came out, I loved it. It's the one now that really doesn't stand the test of time so well. Uh, But three, four, five got better and better. Uh, You know, you could say like uh, Simon Pegg, Benji is kind of a hero as well. but, But yeah, you're right. Ethan Hunt is kind of, would be the one who really is like the hero. Yeah. All right, Yours. that was you, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So the Terminator, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. So yes. that was ingenious idea. Because he was evil in the first one. Because obviously he was bad. And then, um, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was an international star. So what better idea than to do a Terminator, but make him a good Terminator. That's great. And it worked so well. His chemistry with John Connor, Edward Furlan uh, was so Furlong. great. And, the you know... Hasta la vista, baby. And then, I mean... I'll be back. That scene at the end when he has to self-terminate and he puts his thumb up as he's going into the lava gets me every time. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I watched it a few <laughs> months ago and I was sobbing like a little baby. That's really sad. Um, but then, yeah, John Connor would also be a hero. Yes. Um, Sarah Connor, Lyndall Hamilton was one of the ultimate heroines. She was fantastic. And then Kyle Reese, Michael Bean in uh, the first Terminator, okay. was a great hero. So uh, I had to mention them too. Which um, this one follows along with the time period somewhat Ripley from Aliens. Next on my list. Yeah. Our lists are sinking This is up really quite scary. Well. No, no, it's good. I mean, yeah. And, and, I mean, and a lot of my list isn't even like Googled. These are just like, I remembered them. Yeah. Ripley, I think, is one of the all time great female movie heroes, heroines. Yeah. Um, right up there with Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. I actually think Ripley's a bit better. So, it's and, a bit and, more kick ass. Yeah. Well, they're trajectory trajectory was also similar because mm-hmm. in the first Terminator and the first Alien they're both like damsel in distress is just kind of fighting for right. them their lives um, and they're like the last women standing but in the sequels is when they really become badass mm-hmm. uh, but Ripley is a great choice you know Yours. get away from her you bitch that's from Aliens I and need she's to in the him badly. and she takes down the queen alien incredible alright let's see um, well duh Batman 
Of course. So um, you've got... I went Ma- a bit lower on all of those yeah. on my list. <laughs> so you've got Michael Keaton, yeah. who did a great job. Here's something interesting. Um, after the DC episode I did with um, Aaron and Juju a couple weeks back, um, I went back and I watched um, Batman Begins, because that's his favorite movie oh of all time, which God. I found so funny. Um, and I actually enjoyed it. You there was did? A lot, there was a lot I appreciated oh, about funny. it. Michelle Pfeiffer, for instance, is great. And... Um, the penguin is really spooky in it. Um, and Michael Keaton's good in it. And then I watched uh, the original Batman again, the 1989 one. I actually enjoyed it a lot That's more. Great. And then I watched Batman Forever and I couldn't stand it. I turned it off. It's awful. <laughs> That's the Val Kilmer one. Yeah. Um, but, so it's Michael Keaton. Christian Bale is my favorite Batman from yes. Nolan's trilogy. Mine too. And then um, Batfleck, Ben Affleck. Everyone shits on Ben Affleck as Batman. I don't have a problem with him. I think he's fine. Those films have other problems. I actually yeah. don't think he's one of them. Yeah. Uh, but, but Batman is obviously the ultimate, you know, movie hero. And then obviously you've got um, the, the original, you know, Batman from of the course. TV show and stuff as well. Okay, my dear. All right. Um, my next one is Mad Mudigan, Willow. Oh, Val Kilmer. He is my one of my all-time favorite movie heroes because he also starts off as sort of a jerk. Yeah. It doesn't give a crap. He's a scallywag. And he becomes this unbelievable great hero that helps them all save the day. That's what makes you love a real hero more and more, like mm-hmm. Han Solo, when they have a character arc. Yeah. And they redeem themselves and then they become really heroic. Yeah. I think that's interesting. But yeah, that's a great pick. And actually, Willow would be should be a... Uh, noted as a hero as well. Of course, he's a complete hero. hero. Um, You're you're totally right. I can't believe I didn't say that. Um, Okay, Superman, obviously. So Christopher Reeve, to me, is the ultimate Superman. I don't think anyone's uh, done a better job, but also Brandon Routh played him and then Henry Cavill played him. Uh, But Superman, one of the ultimate heroic movie characters. Which I'll follow up with Thor, obviously. Chris Hemsworth? Yeah, Yeah. obviously. Swoon. Um, Swoon, but also just such a great hero all round. Lovable, funny, amazing hero. Yeah, I mean, Marvel cast those heroes perfectly. Very well. So he is fantastic, and I'm going to mention those as well. Okay. Um, Okay, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Um, That was a surprise to me, you know, because I did not know the actress at all. Obviously, Obviously, she's, you know, very beautiful and whatnot, but she embodied that character, I thought, so well. Totally. She did a great job. So I'm going to go back to uh, Wesley from Princess Bride. Oh, Wesley. Wesley from Princess Bride. Yeah, well, I guess it would be Wesley and then it would also be Inigo Montoya. Exactly. I mean, he's like the ultimate hero. And the giant. Yeah, Andre the giant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there anyone else? Um, No, they're really the three yeah, heroes. the primary ones. Yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're great heroes, of course. Nice. Okay, and then I have Spider-Man. Okay. So Tobey Maguire. But also Andrew Garfield and uh, Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Spider Man, such a heroic, you know, movie hero for sure. I have Jack Reacher, Tom Cruise. You know, okay, that's a good pick. So um, those are based on these books mm-hmm. by this guy called Lee Child. He's apparently written like twenty books. My husband and... read the book. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he loved like, it. Yeah, there's like. 20 of them apparently but they've done two jack reaches they've done the first one and then um never go back which was okay i didn't like the film the at first all. one genuinely surprised me it was actually really good um there again there was a lot of controversy because the character in the book is apparently this tall blonde guy hmm. who's like six foot five and very imposing um but apparently what lee child has said is well yeah tom cruise doesn't physically look like him but nobody can embody him better in his own way than Tom Cruise does. Right. And you don't think about Tom Cruise being small or short or anything no, like that, especially in the first movie. I thought he did a great job and I thought the film was really well made. So that's a good pick. Jack and Reacher. again, movie heroes, not exactly. adaption. I'm, I'm really looking at them as their, you know, being a hero in the film. Yeah. And his integrity, he's uncompromising. Um, he, he does it really well. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Especially the he's first totally one. He's totally off the grid. Well, again, I'm just talking about the first Jack yeah. Reacher. Um, okay, good. So yeah, I guess I'm kind of into all the superheroes right now, but they're superheroes. So we have to mention them. Absolutely. Okay. So our, our good old Hugh Jackman, Wolverine. Absolutely. He's played Wolverine nine times it's unbelievable and with logan which came out um at the beginning of 2017 he you know apparently put his hat down for the last time uh, and you know he was a complete unknown until x-men came out and that's what made him a superstar yeah. was was wolverine um i mean who could jackman's just he's a he's such a charming likable guy in real life so or seems charming. to be 
Um, and he's actually done several good movies, but I think his most iconic character is sure. Wolverine. And Wolverine is such a um, a great anti-hero almost because yeah. he is one of those quote unquote superheroes that is completely blood thirsty yeah he's a feral animal yeah. and you know that's why they were able to do an, a hard r-rated film logan which was the the last one that came out but yeah wolverine is a great choice i enjoyed the wolverine films with him and logan and so forth more than the x film x-men films right. yeah because of his performance well he was the breakout star yeah from the X- x-men yeah. films for sure and he's so like haunted yeah. as a character yeah. He's he's just this so haunted. Anyway. Oh, he plays it so well. Okay, good. So Iron Man, Robert Downey it was Jr. Me next. Oh, sorry, I skipped. Well, let's talk about Iron Man. Sorry, was it really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like taking over here. Do it. It's fine. You're on a superhero role. Anyway, number one, I'm really happy that that you know gave Robert Downey Jr. his big second break yeah because a lot of people forget that he was huge in the 90s he mm-hmm. even got oscar nominated for chaplin and then he had a long run with drug abuse and problems like he that he pulled himself out i was really respectful of yeah. that and you know tom cruise was cast and supposed to star in iron man oh, gosh and he passed on it and it went to robert downey jr i'm glad yeah well of course he's made it iconic um but also he just embodied tony stark mm-hmm. and iron man and it has made that such a i mean he's kind of a douchebag tony stark he you know he's such a he's... smart ass he's smarmy um he's very conflicted um but you know he tries to save the day so <laughs> somehow you love him all right my dear go ahead you can do two it's fine um, to follow on a little bit from the superhero, Mr. Incredible. Oh, so you finally saw did, The Incredibles. And I loved it so <laughs> much. Isn't that great? I really did. Yeah, yeah. Definitely now probably my one or first or second favorite of, um, the, Pixar films. of the Pixar films. I loved that hero. Yeah. He is a great hero. Talk about like addicted to being a hero. Right. I mean, he's brilliant. Yeah, and such a great action film, right? Oh, I mean, so there are good. some. It's animation, but there are some action sequences in the Incredibles oh, yeah. that took my breath away. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's a great pick. Okay, uh, you can do one more. Karate Kid. Oh yeah, Ralph Macchio. So that's uh, Daniel son. Daniel, Daniel Larusso, I think, is his name. Yeah. Um, I oh, love the Karate well, Kid. Well, then, then we have to say Mr. Mm-hmm. Miyagi. I was going to say Mr. Miyagi Wax as well. On. Wax off, <laughs> wax off, wax off. And what a great, I mean, the Karate Kid is this great. I love the old, I mean, which is similar to like Spider-Man and all of these. They're just sort of somewhat geeky kids that don't really have, you know, much going on. They don't have the girl and this and that. And then they just totally change and become these strong, uh, incredible individuals we to help other people. Ralph Macchio played like a 14-year-old, a 15-year-old, maybe 16-year-old guy. I think he was 27. Yep. Yeah. When he filmed The Karate Kid, which, by the way, is one of my favorite films. I love, I love that Kid. movie to pieces. Uh, the whole trilogy isn't wonderful, but I remember seeing it in the theater and I saw all of them in the theater. Second one's OK. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the cra- first one's the wonderful. The crane kick, you know, yeah. the iconic ending. Um, but again, that would kind of be a duo. It would be uh, yeah. Pat Moriarty, I think, was uh, Mr. Miyagi. And mm-hmm. then Ralph Macchio as Daniel LaRusso. The exactly. Karate Kid. You go. All righty, let's see. Oh, all right, so Chris Evans, Captain America. So, I mean, I think that's interesting because when the first Avenger, Captain America, the first Avenger came out, it was one of the lesser popular Marvel movies. And then as the years have gone by, it's now considered like one of the most popular and beloved Marvel films. And I've actually gone, I, I saw it in the theater. I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. And I've gone back and seen it a few times and it's great. I actually like the second one better. Well, that's what I'm saying. Winter Soldier is fantastic, but you probably should revisit the first one because mm. it's actually really good. Um, and Chris Evans embodies great. Um, that film, re- you know, sorry, that character so well. He really does. Um, anyway, Captain America. I mean, You know, they could have made it so cheesy, but they actually make it something that, you know, is very kind of stoic and, you know, something you can really admire, which I thought was very well done. Now, the next one I have is one of my favorite movies of all time and also a very interesting hero, Forrest Gump. Did you say a hero? Think about it. Really think about the whole film. I'm thinking. (laughs) He saves... You know, well, in Vietnam a lot, War, he, he does saves, heroic things. He for saves. Sure. He saves a lot of people's lives. He does. He does. He keeps doing incredible things. He saves Jenny. In essence, like everybody he well, runs into, kind of. he sort of inadvertently helps and saves. 
I find him a hero. He's a protagonist that you root for big time. I guess so. I mean, the only reason why I debate that is... Because he's I, not smart? Well, it's not. No, no. I love that movie. But the thing I always think about with Forrest Gump is it's such a morose film, actually. Yes and there's no. there's death surrounding him everywhere. It, it, it yeah. really is. It, it, like, literally, he just... He deals with death nonstop. But I, look, I get what you're saying. But he's think- he's someone, He's definitely the protagonist, for sure. I just don't know that he's heroic. Other than the Vietnam War. He's obviously, because he goes and he saves a bunch of people, remember? And he gets shot in the butt. So he, it, that, for sure, he was a hero. He saves Jenny at the beginning. And he's the world champion ping pong player. He's the world champion ping pong player. He ends up, you know... Um, he just does incredible things. Okay, we'll put Forrest Gump at the top of the movie heroes list. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I said, deep cut one. My but my me, wife will love that. He is yeah. a hero. It's okay. I, I mean, I won't contend with it. To me, he would be like a war hero from Vietnam War. Um, okay, good. Let's move on. Uh, let's see. Okay, Rambo, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I mean, Rambo's the ultimate action hero, but he's definitely a hero. I mean, sure. You're, you're a lady. So have you watched the Rambo films? Of course not. No. Oh. First Blood is actually very good and okay. holds up quite well. The other ones are obviously just like guns and explosions. I'll watch it. Um, no, you won't. <laughs> if you have me watch it, I will watch it. Okay. All right, next. Simba, the Lion King. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He's a hero. 100%. Yeah. I mean, of course. Absolutely. And when you think, I was thinking of the other characters, but actually Simba is the hero. He is the hero. For sure. Yeah. Um, Kills I mean, he, Scar. He takes on Scar and saves the day. And yeah. Oh, God, I love The Lion King. So good. Okay, good. All right. Mad Max. Oh, that so, was on my list. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got, you probably haven't seen the original films from the 80s. I have. With Mel Gibson. I have. Yeah, which unfortunately, do, <laughs> you're so proud of that. that <laughs> they really don't hold up no, very don't. well at all. That's why the I'm new surprised. The one is amazing. Mad Max Fury Road with uh, Tom Hardy is amazing. But then you have to say Furiosa. Yes. Charlie Theron. Because the truth is, she's really the hero. He begrudgingly helps her in the end. He's kind of, again, an anti-hero. He he was going to just leave them all. But then, you know, Mad Max steps up and helps her. But uh, Furiosa, uh, Charlie Theron's portrayal of that character almost stole the movie. Amazing. So. All right, I'm going on a little bit of a tiny Disney rant here. It's okay. Um, Mary Poppins. As a hero? Yes. Or a heroine? See, I don't she know about that. She saves that family. Do you remember that film? You she know, saves the family. You can look online. There are all these um, blogs and like controversies over how creepy and weird Mary Poppins actually what? is. How she breaks into this household. and It's actually kind <laughs> of funny. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know if she's a heroine. Yes, she saves the family. Like when they arrive, the, pe- the family is like broken and not doing well the kids are behaving badly and she no and they're they're unhappy and like things aren't good and you know it's like she she takes them and uplifts them and she's she's a hero i'm mary poppins y'all you know yondu from guardians of the galaxy vol 2 he's ultimately a hero but mary poppins mary poppins is a hero (laughs) back me up here listeners tony is wrong all righty okay i won't argue it but uh, i don't think yes you will Okay, um, Tombstone, Doc Holliday, and Wyatt Earp. So, uh, again, these are real-life characters. Uh, That's Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer. Mm -hmm. Also, their portrayal in the in the film is fantastic especially you know val kilmer is someone i like as an actor he hasn't done a lot of films where i thought he was exceptional and tombstone as doc holiday is one of those roles that he was incredible i i think he was worthy of like an oscar Mm -hmm. um he's he's so good in it but um i think they're they're a great heroic duo in tombstone all right uh guardians of the galaxy Oh, who? All of them. <laughs> okay, I All the Guardians. That. I don't remember all their so names. you've got Chris Pratt as yes. Star-Lord. Star-Lord. You've got Groot. You've got Rocket, which mm-hmm. is voiced by Bradley Cooper, and Vin Diesel does Groot. I am Groot. No. I am Groot. 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 Okay, I'm not good at this. I'm better. I am Groot. I am Groot. All right, okay, <laughs> let's move on. Um, but they are definitely all heroes. Then, what's the... So, um, the um, girl. Zoe Zeldana. Um, Zoe Zeldana, yeah. The uh, green one. <laughs> wow. All right, sorry. Anyways, the Guardians of the Galaxy are fantastic heroes yeah. to me. 
They oh, are Drax, Dave Drax. Bautista, I, who I love. No, absolutely, they are. And again, they're kind of scoundrels, and yeah. you know, they're kind of criminals at first, but they come together and they become the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that's a good pick. Okay, this is one for the men: Riggs and Murtaugh. That's lethal of weapons. Of course, one hundred percent. Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, who I love, by the way, as a duo. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So they're fantastic. Okay, uh, good. Aladdin. Aladdin. Okay, he's a hero. Isn't he a, a thief? At, at the beginning, yeah. yeah. But again, he's one of those heroes who has a great arc. He's a thief and a scoundrel. But he's not really a hero then. Doesn't he save the palace from the bad guy at the end? Does he? He does, from Jafar. Oh. Jafar's trying to take over the I know, the we didn't have Jafar kingdom. as a, a villain, I don't think. It's but true. Anyway. He, Jafar is coming to basically, you know, take over and become sultan or something. And then and he, saves, he the day. saves the day. All right, Aladdin, there you go. All right, let's see. Okay, Maximus, Russell Crowe. 100%. From Gladiator. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... I've seen that in way too long. Oh. I don't even remember what happens. See, I love that film so much. Um, the character development is phenomenal. And, um, yeah, I mean, he he's the ultimate God, hero in that film. Okay, uh, my next one is Dorothy, Wizard of Oz. She's a hero. Is she? Are you serious? You're gonna uh, you're you're, you're gonna well, go she against Dorothy. Accidentally kills the witch, and what else does she no, do? No, at the that's end heroic? she kills the witch. She doesn't accidentally. No, kill when her. she lands in Oz, her house from the tornado kills the witch. Yes, and then she goes on her whole travels and blah blah blah, and then she actually kills the witch oh, later. So she kills two witches. Correct. Wow, that's very. There was heroic. the Wicked Witch of the West and the Wicked Witch of the East. So I guess she kills the East one first by and mistake. Then... I'll get you by pretty in your little dark too. And then she go, you know, she saves Oz. She okay. is a heroine. It's been a long time. All right, yeah, you're right. These are uh, interesting choices as heroes. I wanted to. I'll give it to to, 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 to twist it a little. All right, Peter Weller, RoboCop. He's badass. Sure. He's a hero. All right, we'll move on. Actually, on. <laughs> that reminds me of um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in which one? <sighs> Tony, I forgot. He's done so many films. No, True Lies. The one that was just, it was remade with, um, the one where they like go back in time. No. Um, come on, you know what I'm talking I don't know, about. know, but we're burning up seconds. Okay, never mind. Um, I'll remember it. I didn't okay. note it down and I remembered it and didn't write it down. Okay, my next one is Liam Neeson in pretty much everything, but Taken. Okay, yeah. He's a hero. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he basically just slaughters and kills everyone who took his daughter, but I guess so, yeah. <laughs> um, I, again, when, I guess I guess when I thought heroic, I thought people who saved the day. Well, he I saves really, his daughter I really and looked at everyone it, and who fucked you're, with root, him. <laughs> you're rooting for him, and you you consider him a hero. I mean, yeah. he kills very bad people. Yeah. Part of the thing as well is the film is a good, solid action film. It's um, quite you know, dark, too. I have a particular set of skills. I will <laughs> find you. I will kill you. But then the trilogy was terrible. The yeah, second the rest one were was awful. awful. I didn't even bother with the third one. Okay, so here's a real duo of heroes. Mm. Captain Kirk and Spock. 100%. So obviously you've got William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, but then also Zachary Quinto and Chris Pine from the new ones. Again, that's kind of a duo, like Batman and Robin and... Um, incredible i think though yep. you know also you really care about their friendship even in the 80s one in the wrath of khan spoilers you know when um spock dies um and then he comes back and then so they're it, gonna kill off spock well no see in into darkness that's um, when they would have killed they him off. well they reversed it uh, and remember they had um chris they pine had, almost died yeah. yeah they had um captain kirk die in almost the same way with a hand on the glass and but know, he didn't die and but then spock brings him back mm. anyway um spock and captain kirk well, ultimate yeah. hero Total duo for sure Okay, good. Um, Denzel Washington. Now, I was trying to go through all my... D wait, movie before... Movie heroes, which movie? Okay, before you start, let me finish. Now you're doing actors. Let me finish. Okay, then. Denzel in Man on Fire, The Equalizer, and Deja Vu. I took my favorite ones. See, I uh, look, I understand what you're saying. Think about it. Man on Fire is a very disturbing movie. So good, He though. doesn't just kill people. He tortures the fuck out of them but he saves he, the little girl yeah who he thinks is dead he actually is on the journey of just pure vengeance he thinks yeah. she's dead spoilers because the twist is she's actually alive and then he gives his life over for her yeah. but um i mean he like he's still a hero tortures and mutilates people and he kind of does the same thing in equalizer i'll give it to you i just Wolverine don't think of it slaughters and kills sure. people 
Sure, I guess so. I guess you're right. Um, Equalizer. He's a he's he's this weird anti-hero of yeah. killing evil people. Yeah, sure. Okay, good. I'll give it to you. Um, Zorro, Antonio Banderas, yes. the Mask of Zorro. But also, remember, he's a good hero. You know, look, you're not wrong with that. I guess I'm just trying to think of like immortalized heroes of the big screen of of movies. You it's know, not what we said. Um, well, just movie heroes is what we said, but. Uh, Zorro for sure. Uh, yeah. I don't even remember who played him earlier. I really enjoyed the first Mask of Zorro with Antonio Banderas and Catherine Zeta Jones and uh, Anthony Hopkins. I like that a lot. Uh, I never saw the second one, but that's a good hero. I didn't see the second one. It's like one a either. swashbuckler. Yeah, he's a good hero. Um, I'm getting down to the end of my don't list. Don't get depressed. Uh, why have <laughs> you just been beating me down? Um, Clarice, Silence of the Lambs. That's next to my list. Yeah. Yes. I, it was re- really interesting because I was looking at it and I almost picked Hannibal Lecter. He's <laughs> because he's the one who helps her he find solves Buffalo it. Bill. Yeah, yeah, he helps her solve it, but she ends up being the actual hero. She so. is. Well, she's the heroine for sure. Yeah. And that's a great one. Okay, good. Um, let's see. Okay, Spartacus, Kirk Douglas. But Spartacus is a very heroic character. I am Spartacus. Well, he's, he saves the slaves and then he gets killed and kills them all so it's kind of weird but uh, um but spartacus is a very heroic character okay sure. my last one is actually a really kind of deep cut again but don't take this one from me which is andy from shawshank redemption oh andy dufresne and the way reason i say that is because i look at that film and in the end of the day without what he does the warden wouldn't have ever been exposed and what he was doing to everyone and he wouldn't have killed himself and everything else spoiler it's an old film um so he sets a lot of people free from really great oppression. Yeah, I guess he helps shake things up. You're yeah. right. You know, and obviously it's an incredible film. Okay, good. Uh, ben Hur, Charlton Heston. Yep. Very heroic character. So you don't have any more. Mm-mm. All right, I'll rattle through these. So this actually went kind of fast, but that's okay. Um, a lot of these are like real gruff anti-hero characters, but uh, the French Connection, Gene Hackman uh, as Pop- Popeye Doyle. Great film. He won the Oscar. Uh, he's kind of this anti-hero detective, but he like sleeps with hookers and does drugs. And but he's like the hero. Um, Marge Gunderson. I think this is a great one. Francis McDormand from uh, Fargo. You know, oh yeah, it's you been want a, a long chai? time. You want a cup of chai? I mean, what I loved about that film, you think of Fargo. Uh, it, it's I can't so remember. So dark. Yeah, it was very dark. I can't remember where it's set, but it's very snowy yeah. and cold, and you know, there's all this you know, mayhem and chaos and all these evil people around. And she's this like pregnant cop who just kind of comes along and saves the day. Mm-hmm. And it, it's such a subtle performance, but the character is phenomenal. Cool. And I, I never forget that. Um, the Man With No Name. So that's Clint Eastwood in all of the spaghetti westerns. Okay. Um, he's just called The Man With No Name. But he's obviously, for like the, the western characters, he's like the ultimate kind of heroic one. And then another Clint Eastwood one is obviously uh, Detective Harry Callahan, mm-hmm. Dirty Harry. You haven't seen any of the, no. those films? I've heard of a lot of these and I haven't watched them. Or I've seen them when I was younger. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, <laughs> do ya? Um, and let's see. Okay, Oscar Schindler. Liam Neeson. I was going to put that down, but you know I never finished that film. Yeah, so, I mean, a real person that saved thousands of people. Total hero. And because of the progeny, I think ultimately he saved over 20,000 people. Yeah, Because of amazing. all the, you know, the kids they had and so on. Um, let's see. Oh, Jack Sparrow, Johnny Depp. Of course. I mean, again, he's such a... I was going to put it on there, but he's also but... a bit of a... He's, he's a hero and also a little bit of a villain. But you love him. You absolutely love him. And then Jack Burton... Big Trouble in Little China. Kurt Russell. It's all in the reflexes. Have you not seen Big Trouble in <laughs> no. Little China? So good. All right. Another Kurt Russell one. Um, Snake Plissken. Escape from New York. Uh, all right. She's like I'm, staring at me blankly. What? I'm almost done. And then uh, Katniss Everdeen from Hunger Games. I can't Hunger believe Games. I actually missed yeah. that. I thought of that. Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't a big Total fan. Total Recall. That's, oh, okay. Okay. With sorry. I just came to me. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. think he's a hero. Okay, uh, so if you remember something, the twist it's not in that, him. Well, no, yeah. the twist in that film is that he actually is bad. So the good guy he, is the cop, but, is the well, other. Well, no, he actually is bad, but then he, he turns good ultimately. Right, yeah. But he thinks he's good, but then he finds out he actually is bad, but then he... He's actually good. Ultimately, he becomes good. But anyway, um, yeah. The Hunger Games, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, who I thought was hero. perfectly cast as Katniss Everdeen. And, um, I mean, that first book was phenomenal. And first I, movie I was really great too. liked the first film. Me too. Uh, I didn't like the rest, but she, she was a great kind of mm-hmm. heroine. 
Totally. Well, that's it. We kind of went through that pretty fast. Yeah. We had a lot of the same ones, too, at the yeah, beginning. We, yeah. We, we our, were very... In- our lists really lined up, <laughs> which was quite interesting. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. And, uh, you know, quite a few of those were um, ones that came from, uh, you know, listeners. Remember, yeah. I did a poll some weeks back, so I, I wanted to mention the ones that other people had said, which actually would have been on my list anyway. Right. Did you want to say something? Well, listeners, let, let us know if we missed any vital ones. Definitely let us know. Email us or, or post on Tony the Movie Guy page. Yeah. But there you go. So that's movie heroes uh that's all i've got let's go uh have a drink and uh, pull our feet up huh? Party. good night good night Thank you so much for listening to another new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. We would like to remind you to follow us on all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Tony the Movie Guy. Also, please do leave us a rating and review on Apple iTunes. We really, really appreciate it. And it helps us more than you know. And finally, we also have a Patreon page. Um, so if you'd like to check that out, go on to patreon.com and search Tony the Movie Guy. We'd love to have you as a patron. And over the next few weeks, we will be getting all back episodes of Tony the Movie Guy and all new ones onto our new YouTube channel. So you can go onto YouTube and search Tony the Movie Guy and you get our channel and you can get all old episodes of Tony the Movie Guy. So if it's easier to listen on YouTube, please do. Um, and I think that's all the news updates I have for you this week until next week. Bye-bye.